Okay, so I wanted to make this video because I've gotten the question quite a few times. What does it take to get a scholarship to play college basketball? And I wanted to break down my journey, how as a 5'10", semi-unathletic, let's be honest, unathletic guard, how I found myself in the position that I'm in right now. So by the end of this video, I wanna give you three main things that I want you to focus on and try to change about your daily habits in order to give yourself the best chance at getting a college scholarship. Now, we're gonna talk basketball today because that's what I know. But if you have a different passion, whether it's a sport or not, I think a lot of this stuff does apply. So I wanna talk about why it matters. Getting a college scholarship. It's very romanticized. Everybody's kind of gunning for it in youth sports. But my dad used to always tell me, no matter what happens in your career, you're gonna learn a ton, right? You're gonna go through ups and downs and we're gonna get into that. But that college scholarship, as soon as you sign on that dotted line, you now have a leg up on a lot of other people who leave college with a massive amount of debt. College scholarships, whether you can get them through sports or academics, are huge for your after college life. From a physical standpoint, I've had coaches at both schools that I've went to tell me this. When we go out and we recruit, we're looking for players who are great at something. Now that might seem very vague to you, but this is going to help you build out your own workout because it's talking about what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? If you don't know those two, you need to sit down with an index card, write strengths out, write weaknesses out. And then when you're writing out your workout, whatever drills that you get from whatever website or camp that you've been to, understand that on a daily basis, when I'm in the gym for two to three hours, 90% of my workout is focused on my strengths and trying to sharpen those even more. That is what coaches are gonna look for when they evaluate you and what you could potentially bring to their team. The other 10% can be weaknesses. So for me, in high school, I wish I would've used that 10% more to work on finishing around the rim. Ultimately, you have to understand that you need to probably be going in the gym twice a day. I think if you're under that, odds are you're probably not even getting the volume that you need to really see strides made in your game. With that being said, when you watch this video, you might feel motivation for two to three days to get in the gym twice a day. And that means practice is probably somewhere in between there, and that motivation is gonna die off. This is all over the internet right now, but it's very, very true. You don't need motivation, you need discipline. Another thing I wanted to throw in on the physical standpoint is I knew that at 5'10", scoring probably wasn't gonna be the number one value asset that I brought to a team. It was gonna be my playmaking ability and my ball handling that were gonna allow me to stay on the court and help our team run smoothly. However, somewhere along the line, somebody's gonna tell you as a player, points aren't everything, and that's true. However, if you are not a threat to score, you will not play. Number two, let's talk about the mental side of basketball. I think this is a part that is completely overlooked. It's something that in the last three years I've tried to spend a ton of time working on and sharpening, but I feel like I was very behind the ball. I wish I would have started with sports psychology topics way before I got to college. Before we go any further, if you need some place to start with this, I would highly suggest that you order this book. It's called Mind Gym. If you need a place to start, and you find yourself lacking confidence, inconsistent, any of those kind of things that you feel like mentally you're not the same person game in and game out, I would start there because it has a lot of really, really good lessons. It's an easy read. I don't like hard reads where I have to spend 90% of my time just trying to decipher what the words are. I think this quote from Steve Nash will help a lot of you no matter where you are in sports or in life, okay? He was maybe six foot two, um, not super athletic, Nothing freaky about him, won't stand out of a crowd. At one point, he was playing college basketball at Santa Clara University. Right now, they're in the West Coast Conference. They're not in the Big East, the Big 12, the Big 10. They're not a Power 5 school. They're a mid-major, so you would assume he, as a two-time MVP, would dominate. But that's not the case. He said in an interview one time, there were many days where I questioned whether or not I could play at that level. He wasn't talking about even thinking about the NBA. So if you find yourself frustrated or like you've hit a rut, no matter where you are in your career, I oftentimes think back to that quote and think about where Steve Nash is now. Another big thing to focus on from a psychological standpoint is momentum. Momentum in my mind is what separates players. So when you look at a Jordan Poole or a Trey Young or any of these young players in the NBA, they have taken momentum from college and rolled it right into the NBA. 
which in turn probably means in high school, they had momentum there and they let it continue to roll. So a lot of this has to do with your confidence and your ability to stack positive days and really try to be your biggest fan. Everybody tells you you should be your biggest critic and I think that's true to some extent. However, the best players in the world find ways to look at the positives and then build on those. And when I look back on my career so far, I think I had a ton of momentum coming out of high school and then it was completely halted. Now, whose fault that was is up to the universe to decide. I don't think there is any wrong decision. However, my momentum died and then now it's something that I'm continually trying to work at and get back and that's just how life goes. So if I would tell you anything, is try to stack up positive days and then just allow your momentum to get you to a point that I like to call delusional confidence. Once you have delusional confidence, you'll find yourself playing like the ones you watch on TV. Jordan Poole's, Trey Young, Steph Curry's, they play with delusional confidence. They think everything that they put up is going in. Okay, so our third and final point is about exposure. Now, when I say exposure, I mean, are you able to get yourself in front of the right people? A lot of people, if they come from rural parts of the country, assume that they have no chance at getting a college scholarship because who's gonna come to Northeastern Nebraska to watch a high school practice? Well, nobody is. The number one thing when parents ask me, hey, little Johnny or little Susie wants to play college basketball, what should we do? First and foremost, be good at basketball. Second of all, and this is really important, Johnny or Susie needs to find a way to get on a shoe circuit AAU team. AAU basketball is the travel aspect of basketball. It's the basketball played in the summertime. Odds are John Calipari, once again, isn't flying out unless you are seven foot five in the next Victor Wembenyama to Northeastern Nebraska. He's going to go to a select few tournaments in the summertime called live events. And if you are not on a shoe circuit team that's sponsored by a Nike, an Under Armour and Adidas, odds are he might not see you. So the tricky part is understanding the difference between AAU teams that are affiliated with a shoe company and those that are not. If they are not on Nike EYBL or Adidas Gauntlet or the Under Armour Association, they are not a shoe circuit AAU team. This is the tough part. You're probably wasting your money. What I'm not telling you is from first to eighth grade that you need to be on a shoe circuit team because it doesn't matter anyways. You need to develop however you're going to develop, but once you get into that high school age range, you need to try to find a way to get on a shoe affiliated AAU team, therefore putting yourself in live events where there'll be hundreds and thousands of coaches from all division one, division two, and division three levels watching and evaluating talent. So that's my biggest advice to you. Once you get to a certain level of skill and age, you need to try to find a way to get on a shoe circuit team. It's not gonna be cheap, it's not gonna be easy. Before we wrap things up, I am gonna tell you something though. If you're good, they will find you. If you're great, they will definitely find you. Tyrese Halliburton is a great example. I tell this story because I grew up with Tyrese and around him in Wisconsin, I played on the Under Armour circuit, Tyler Hero played on the Nike circuit, and Tyrese didn't play on either. He was just really, really good. And then he carried that momentum once again from high school, he got an offer, he took it, went to Iowa State, a great system where he could then carry his momentum through college. And now he was an all rookie his first year and he's continuing to build on that momentum in the NBA as one of the best young players in the league. Okay, so that's it for this video. You have three things that I feel like you can change about your game right now from a physical, mental, and exposure standpoint that will put you in the best position when it comes time to get a college scholarship. Now, I'd like to sit here and look you in the eye and tell you that we post every single week on a specific day, but Brandon and I both know that our schedules don't always align that way. So, some weeks there might be two videos, other weeks there might not be any, it fluctuates. So in order to sync up with when we post and what we post, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're subscribed and turn on those notifications and we love you. Peace.